Hello and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John and today I am going to be doing my final book review of 2020. And for that, I wanted to do something just a little bit different. In fact, I didn't even actually expect to do a book review, but I enjoyed this book so much that I just felt like I had to talk about it. So even though it is called a review, it may not necessarily be necessarily be just that, all right? Uh, so let me go ahead and begin. When I was a kid, uh, probably from the ages of about 12 to, I don't know, 15 or so, uh, and, and I would go to the grocery store. My mother, she liked to drag me everywhere. It seems like the women in my life seem to like to drag me places. I don't know why. I'm not complaining because I have a lot of fun. But anyway, uh, at the particular grocery store she would take me to, uh, I wouldn't make me go to or whatever. There was a couple of these little digest size, size comic books. Now, one of them was Boris Karloff's, I believe it was called Boris Karloff's Mystery Comics Digest. And the other one, the name escapes me, I don't know. But I used to buy those things religiously, okay? I Anytime a new one came out, boom, I had to have it. Because it had these awesome, this awesome little digest, like so big had these awesome little horror stories in it. Well, one of the stories was one called John Bell's Devil Witch. And I was just absolutely fascinated by this little comic book story about this witch that tor tormented this man until up to the point of his death. In fact, she was actually responsible for his death. All right? And I have been fascinated by the Bell Witch ever since. Anything I can read on her, I try to find to read. Uh, movies, I went and s I've seen movies about her, like there was the Bell Witch Haunting. I've seen documentary films. There's now a new one by Small Town Monsters called The Mark of the Bell Witch, I believe it's called. I'm, I'm going to watch that. I haven't watched it yet. I saw an American Haunting, and at first I didn't like it because I didn't like the premise that they put forth as to why this this entity was haunting this family. And I'll get to that in a minute, all right? Or in a few minutes or whatever. Don't get ahead of me, all right? Um, or don't let me get ahead of myself. There you go. Uh, so anyway, the book I'm going to talk about today, and I'm going to give you a little history of The Bell Witch before I begin, but the book I'm going to talk about today is called Bell Witch, The Truth Exposed. And this is by Camille Moffat. And this is co-written with Chris and Walter Kirby. Now, Chris is a girl. Chris is a female. She sold the same way as a guy, but she is a female. It's not a same-sex couple. Just wanted to clear that up. Don't know why, but I figured I'd make it clear because they know. Anyway, and they have a daughter, uh, Candy, in the book. You hear about her also. Anyway, Chris and Walter are the owners of the land that the house where John Bell... I, I don't know if they moved... If it's the same house there was on the property... But they live on the property that John Bell and his family lived on during this time, during the time of these hauntings, all right? And on that property is the Bell Witch Cave. So let me go around the world here a little bit, and I'm going to go into a little bit of a history of the Bell Witch. And bear with me, I got this stuff off of, off of Wikipedia. I didn't repeat everything. I didn't write everything down. And I'm going to try to fill in the blanks the best I can. Anyway, the Bell Witch, the whole thing takes place in Robertson County, Tennessee, all right? And she began haunting John Bell and his family. And the witch has been known by many names, but the main one she's been known by was Kate Batts, all right? And anyway, she had began haunting John Bell and his family around 1817. This started whenever John Bell found or saw this strange... Um, creature that resembled a dog, but it wasn't a dog, all right? And then his son, I can't remember which one it is. It might have been John Jr. or it might have been Williams. I'm not sure. They had like nine kids, okay? He saw something that uh, also resembled like a black dog. And then uh, I believe it was Betsy, the youngest daughter, saw what appeared to be the apparition, I guess you could say, of a little girl in a green dress swinging from their from one of their trees and from the way I read it in the book she wasn't swinging down where you know ground level or whatever like this she was up up high kind of so very strange well 
so then the witch started haunting, and some of the things she would do at first, uh, or not at first, we you know you'd have things like they'd hear gnawing at night, like somebody was gnawing on the bedpost, and they'd turn the lights on, nothing, no, nothing there, no, no evidence of anything, no gnawing, no, no marks, no nothing, uh, loud crashes in the night, all sorts of things, but this witch, it seemed to have, okay, let me see here, uh, the witch mainly targeted John Bell, and the witch did communicate. The witch did speak. She was very intelligent, or you know, and um, she could mimic. And I'll get to that in a minute too. But they asked her what did she want, and she said that her grave had been disturbed, and she said that she was going to bring about the death of John Bell because he was the one responsible for it. All right, so he, she just tortured him to no end. Like at one point, he's walking, I believe, from the house to the barn. She keeps just pulling his shoes off, just pulling them off. He can't even, can't even hardly walk without this happening. All right. Uh, another person that she was particularly um, trying to find the right word uh, that she singled out for torment also was the youngest daughter, Betsy. And she would do things, so many just abusive things to Betsy. She would literally slap her across the face and you could see the red marks appear on her face. All right. Uh, she would pull her hair. And I'm not talking just about like, yeah, pull her hair. I'm talking about pull her hair up, lift her off the ground by the roots of her hair. All right. Uh, no matter where Betsy went, she'd go to spend nights with friends and the witch would come there. And sometimes she wouldn't do things to her. Sometimes she would just tell her, you know, I'm letting you know that I'm here. I'm not going to do anything to you tonight, but it's going to start again pretty soon. Okay? I mean, it got to where nobody could sleep in this house, especially John and Betsy. However, the witch paid, was very kind to John's wife, Lucy. In fact, she referred to Lucy as the most perfect woman to walk the earth, and she would bring her fruit. I mean, not just bring her fruit, but fruit would drop from the sky, from the ceiling. I mean, they'd send people up there to look in the attic and stuff. No way it'd be coming down like that. But she would drop nuts, and she would drop grapes, things like that, and she would sing hymns to her. Okay? And some of the other things this witch could do, she could be in two places at once. In fact, at one point in the Bell Witch House, in the Bell House, excuse me, the Bell Household, she recited, word for word, two sermons that occurred at the same time 13 miles away from each other, all right? So, yeah, pretty powerful entity. In fact, even Samuel, not Samuel, oh my God, I just about said Samuel L. Jackson. Well, he's been in every damn movie, so why can't he be in every book too? But anyway, Andrew Jackson, Andrew Jackson, General Andrew Jackson, the man who had become the seventh president of the United States, heard about the Bell Witch, he said, I'm coming there. I'm going to find out for myself. And he brought with him this fellow that claimed to be a witch slayer. So they're all gathered around one night, I believe in the living room. And this witch slayer is bragging and stuff. Well, Andrew Jackson leans over to a friend. He says, I bet this guy is just completely full of himself. In fact, I bet if this thing showed up, he would go running out of the house. And I really wish it would show up. Well, next thing you know, this, the witch shows up or her or the entity shows up unseen. But you can hear her. And she starts just beating this guy over the head, this witch slayer, till he is running out of the house. All right? So they turn around and look, and Andrew Jackson is on his knees. And they can't figure out. They think the poor guy's, poor man's having a heart attack. No, he was on his knees because he could not stop laughing. Okay? That is why he was on his knees. Okay? All right, so I've gone around the world with this. Finally, what happened was the witch did cause John Bell's death. Uh, she poisoned him. Slowly but surely poisoned him. All right? So, um... And it, everything kind of ended after that. You know, there were a few uh, small hauntings and stuff, and the witch kind of communicated a little bit with Betsy. She became seemed to become kinder to her, but she did not want her to marry this particular fella that she was engaged to marry. And she just told her, if you marry this fellow, then you're, just, you're not going to live a good life. All right, so she even, because of this, Betsy even broke off the engagement. 
All right, so now let's get into the talking about the book. The book mainly talks about, because I just gave you, it talks about the history of the Bell Witch, which I just did that for you, okay? But that's okay. Even if I do it for you, you still get a lot more information in the book, okay? But the main thing it talks about is the Bell Witch Cave. There is a cave on the property. And the cave is haunted. They've had psychics come in, and these psychics have talked about this cave and said there's not just one spirit in there. There are several, and that this cave is actually a portal from one world to the next. In fact, they have uh, they said that they have videotaped where they've seen a door appear and spirits walk in and out of this. Now, when I tell you this stuff, I'm telling to you, you know, whether you believe it or not, that's perfectly fine. You know, this stuff fascinates me. I kind of like to believe in it. I do. I, I really do. But... They do tours of the cave. Of course, they charge. It's like $12 a person or something like that. I went to their website. And uh, they do tours. And they do waivers. And tell you, hey, look, you know, we are not responsible for the things that happen in this cave. We cannot control the force forces beyond that are far beyond our control. But they tell you one thing when you go in there. Do not taunt this spirit or spirits. And the people that have gone there and have taunted it have gotten their faces slapped by this entity. They've had their hair pulled by this entity. They've been sent running out of this cave. Uh, if you take a camera in there, the camera just quits working. Or you can take a picture of one thing, but then the next thing you know, your camera is dark, goes black or it breaks altogether. All right, so uh, that's kind of what the main point of the book is about. It talks about the Bell Witch Cave, but another thing it works as is also as a reference book. It refers you to other books about the Bell Witch, such as uh, The Bell Witch and American Haunting by Brent Monahan. Now, that is the one that he believed that the reason these happenings were occurring was because John Bell was sexually molesting Betsy Bell. And when I first saw or heard about this in the movie... I chose not to believe it. I didn't want to believe it. All right. I just thought it was stupid. But then the more I read about this and in the book, uh, I'll give you a little hint about why it might be possible. When John Bell married uh, Lucy Bell, John Bell was 32 years old. Guess how old Lucy Bell was? 12. She was 12 years old. And these hauntings happened around the same time that Betsy had turned 12 also. And they say that girls that are sexually molested like that, especially incestuously, uh, then a lot of poltergeist activity does occur with these girls. It's just a, I don't know if it's, you call it a coping mechanism or not. Anyway, that's one of the books that it references. And, you know, after that I started to go, hmm, this could might maybe be true. Uh, another one that references uh, some of the books that were written way back a long time ago, like by Martin Ingram. I believe, uh, John Bell Jr. also wrote a book. But this book acts as a little bit of talking about the Bell Witch Cave, but it also acts as, like I said, a reference point for other books. You know, it does little, uh, little quotes and stuff from the books, and it makes you want to go out and find the books, other, other books. In fact, uh, I actually just ordered An American Haunting, the book, uh, The Bell Witch, the, An American Haunting, uh, from Amazon after reading uh, this book. Uh, I've also read books on the Bell Witch by John F. D. Taff, which I think is more of a fictional or uh, kind of a, I don't know, maybe a in cold blood type. Because Truman Capote referred to in cold blood as a nonfiction novel, which is really interesting. Okay, but anyway, that being said, um, I was very pleasantly surprised by this book. I actually really enjoyed this book. I gave it five stars just because it is so informative and it does point you in the direction of other sources, you know, so it can help you make up your mind of whether what went on with this thing, with this entity. Why was it doing these things to John Bell and his family, especially Betsy? Why was it so kind to Lucy? All right. And just all these things. Um, so, yeah, that is my discussion, my review my uh, little bit of history of the Bell Witch and of the of Bell Witch, The Truth Exposed by, again, Camille Moffat with Chris and Walter Kirby, the owners of the Bell Witch Cave. Anyway, like I said, this is my last review of 2020. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, 
If I don't make another video before 2020, I just want to say Happy New Year to everybody. And let's hope going into 2021 that it's a whole hell of a lot better than 2020 ever was. Okay? Because 2020 for a lot of people was just not a good year. You had a lot of people out of work. You had a lot of people sick, of course, with this coronavirus. You just had so much going on that you didn't know whether to sink or swim. And I think that if you sank, you're going to be sinking into shit. You know, pardon my pardon my French there. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. You guys have a great evening. This is going to post on Tuesday at 2.30 in the afternoon. Until then, you guys take care. Bye.